Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to play a game of bolt action. This isn't going to be your average battle report style video, firstly because I'm going to be playing it by myself. It's not always easy to get your schedule to line up with that of others, but it is very easy to find time to play with yourself. Wait, that doesn't sound quite right. Anyway, secondly, I'm crap at games and tabletop games are no exception. I don't actually get to play bolt action very often, and this is the first time I've tried to play second edition, so there's probably some rules I've got wrong, and there's definitely things I just outright forgot to do. So I would advise anyone looking for some kind of how to play bolt action tutorial to look somewhere else, or at least keep in mind the fact that I'm a bit of a numpty. This game is largely for entertainment purposes. That said, if you do notice some things that I've got wrong, let me know in the comments. I would love to know. Let's start by having a look at the table. It's not especially exciting, but it will serve well enough. I figured a less crowded board would make for a slightly quicker game. Also, I don't really have a whole lot of appropriately sized terrain. I've got the grocery store from the Plastcraft Games E-War line. There will be a link to the video in which I painted this model in the video description. There will also be a link to the videos about this church ruin which I made mostly from an Italary church ruin kit. I've got these hedgerows which I made from scouring pads and clump foliage. I made these a really long time ago so there's no videos about their construction. I've also got this, unfortunately, not yet painted warehouse, also from Plastcraft Games. And finally, these roads. Again, no videos about these because of how long ago I made them. They're made from cork floor tiles with a fine sandpaper top and some static grass on the sides. Pretty simple. These were intended for use with Flames of War, but they're good enough for a small laneway and bolt action too. Let's quickly have a look at the armies I will be using. First, my British army led by Mortimer, who in this case is a regular first lieutenant. And he has two riflemen to keep him company. I have a regular PR team, then I have two sections of regular infantry. Both consist of an NCO with submachine gun, a light machine gunner and seven riflemen, one of whom counts as the loader for the Bren guns. There's another, smaller, regular rifle platoon here. One NCO and four men, all with rifles. Then I've got two universal carriers which I painted recently. If you want to see that video, there will also be a link in the description. And I can't resist bringing a tank, so I've got this Cromwell, also a regular. And finally, because this is a British army, I get to bring a free artillery observer. That's this guy. I'm going to start the game with my artillery observer and PR team in one of the carriers, and the five-man rifle squad in the other. I think this is the way it's done. And fighting against these British, we have these headless, unpainted Germans. Well, mostly Germans. Some of these are Soviet models because I didn't have enough Germans built. Leading the force is a regular first lieutenant accompanied by two men. These men are Soviets and are equipped with assault rifles. Under his command we have this regular Heer Grenadier squad. All men in this squad are armed with rifles and four of them carry Panzerfausts. The second squad is almost exactly the same except the NCO has an SMG, for reasons. This little six-man squad of Germans and not at all Soviets are all armed with rifles and four of them are carrying Panzerfausts. This army also has three vehicles. As with everything else in this force, all vehicles are regular. We have this Panzer 3J. It's the plastic model by Warlord. And two SDKFZ 251-1 half-tracks. One made by Rubicon and the other made by Warlord. I've made videos about all of these vehicles and you'll find links in the description. Loaded into the Warlord half-track is the first lieutenant and his friends, plus the infantry squad whose NCO has a submachine gun. The Rubicon half-track will carry the all-rifle infantry squad. The scenario I am playing is Scenario 2, Meeting Engagement. I didn't bother rolling for this, I just thought this scenario would be nice and simple to play. And who was there to argue with me? I put the order dice into their little black bag, red for British, grey and brown for German, because I didn't have enough of either. I draw an order die to see who goes first, and it's Germany. I've given numbers to the German units as a way to randomise the order in which they'll come onto the table. In reality I am playing both teams, but in my mind I'm playing as the British. I roll a die, barely into the frame, and the result is a 3. And so the first unit to come onto the table is this 6 man rifle squad. I move the rifle squad onto the table. I could run all 12 inches onto the table right to the edge of the deployment zone, but instead I decide to advance them up behind the grocery store so they have plenty of cover to hide behind. They're the first unit on, so anything could happen and they don't want to be out in the open like chumps. 
I draw another order die and it's Germany again. I roll a d6 to determine the next unit to come on and I get a 4. This is the Panzer 3, so on it comes. I advance it 9 inches, which in hindsight was probably less than ideal. I could have tried to find it some cover. Also, because I'm a numpty, I forgot to place the order dice by the models after they'd been activated. Then, yet another German die is pulled from the bag. I rolled a 2 to select the unit, which is the Rubicon half-track loaded with my 8-man all-rifle infantry squad. I move the Hanamag up to this hedge, which can't be seen through, but I've decided is rough ground, so infantry and vehicles can pass through, but not run through. Next, a British order die is finally drawn. The first move I decide to make with my British is to run on Mortimer the first lieutenant and his buddies. Of course, making sure that they're all within one inch of each other to maintain unit coherency. I've put them behind this hedge which should hide them from any enemies for a little while at least. And of course I remember to give them their order die. This one says Rux. Okay, it says run, but it looks like Rux, which I find amusing. Another British order die is drawn and I decide to run my Cromwell onto the field. I bring it as far forward as I can go within the 12 inch deployment area and pivot it a little bit so it's ready to move around the corner next turn. Germany gets the next order die. I decided to run the second half track just a little bit past the first one. No real reason for doing this, it just seemed like it might be a good idea. Both half tracks are going to keep their passengers inside, and so those are the only German order dice left, so I put them next to their units. Because I'm the only person playing, it doesn't make much sense to keep drawing order dice if the German ones are just going to be set down to indicate that they're staying on their transports. Only British dice are left, so I bring on the rest of my British, obviously. I ran one infantry squad up behind the Cromwell, figuring they should sort of work together. Then I brought this universal carrier up here, probably a little bit too close to the tank, but we'll ignore that for now. This one is carrying the PR team, and I figured I might try using them to deal with the half tracks. Over this side, I ran these guys forward, probably not such a smart move because that enemy tank will probably be able to mow them down. I want to use them to deal with the infantry behind that building, and I couldn't really see another way to do so. I made the same move with this Bren carrier, which contains the five man rifle squad. This is what the table looks like at the end of turn 1. The first order die of turn 2 is British. I figured the German tank was a threat, so I wanted to engage it as soon as possible with my Cromwell. I move it up and pivot around the corner as far forward as I can go. I place the advance order on the tank and open fire on the Panzer III. I could have ordered the Panzer to go down as a reaction, but chose not to. I measured the distance which is about 21 inches, which is well and truly inside of the Cromwell's main gun's 60 inch range. I roll to hit. The roll needed to hit would be 3+, plus, but the Cromwell has moved which makes it a 4+. Plus. I got a 6, and I'm pretty sure that's higher than a 4. Next, I roll to damage. The Panzer is a medium tank, so I need a 9 plus to damage it. Impossible on a D6. The Cromwell has a medium anti-tank gun, which has a plus 5 modifier. That means I need to roll at least a 4 to damage the Panzer. I roll a 4, which gives me a total of 9, so the Panzer is damaged. Then, to see what happens, I need to roll on the damage chart for vehicles. I rolled a 6, which means the Panzer 3 is knocked out. Because I can't find my smoke markers, I simply take the turret off, place it upside down on the tank, and leave the model there as a wreckage. I was kind of hoping to have some more tank action during this game, but hey, this kind of thing happens. The crew of the Cromwell are pretty pleased with themselves, scoring the first victory point of the game. Next up, another British die is drawn. I'm not entirely sure if what I'm going to do now is correct. Probably not. What I'm going to do is deploy my forward artillery observer and have him run forward into the warehouse. He can definitely make it because infantry can run 12 inches. I give him the die to indicate that he's been given the run order. I don't think I can use him to fire the artillery until the next turn, but he will probably have line of sight to something out the window. That seems perfectly fine by the rules to me. Now that I'm editing this, I'm pretty sure that what I did next is wrong. I advance the carrier 9 inches, and then I deploy the PR team up against the church ruins which is within 6 inches of the carrier. I moved these guys here with the intention of attacking the half tracks. I'm still not sure, but I think maybe I should have drawn an order dice for each of those actions, rather than just using the initial order die that I decided to use for the universal carrier and essentially figuring that meant I could tell all the units to get out. As I said, I get things wrong, so don't follow what I do as some kind of guide. That would be silly. Discuss it in the comments if you feel like it though, but do so in a civil manner of course. 
next, because I've advanced with the Bren carrier rather than ran, I can fire at the half track. But I can only do so with one gun because it's unloaded its passengers. I'm pretty sure this part is fine according to the rules. I check the range, which for this gun is 36 inches, and the target is just inside short range, so my only penalty is for moving, meaning I need four ups to hit. I get four shots with the Bren gun because it's a light machine gun. I roll four dice and get three hits. You need seven plus to damage the half track, so the Bren gun can't actually hurt it, but I do believe this weapon's fire can still cause a pin because the target is open topped. So I place one of the pin markers from the Band of Brothers starter set next to the half track. I quite like these markers. I then pull out another British order die. I order this infantry section to run over here, because now the enemy tank is dead I feel there isn't much of a threat over this way, and I kind of want to keep both of my bigger infantry sections near the lieutenant. I kind of move them roughly because this is just a casual solo game, and I'm not overly worried about a few fractions of an inch here and there. Anyone that's watched a few of my videos will probably not be surprised by this relaxed attitude towards the game. Time to draw another die, this time Germany. I decide to drive the Rubicon half-track over the hedge, which is rough ground. A tracked vehicle like this can advance over this, but not at a run. I make a pivot and then move 9 inches towards the corner of the church ruin and place the dice showing advance. And now you can see why I gave this order. I want to give that infantry section over there some bullets. I measure the range and the target is only just within long range. That's 36 inches for this gun. This gun gets 6 shots according to the army list I made with easyarmy.com, but the rule book suggests it gets 5. I went with 6, because why not? With the Hitler's buzzsaw rule, medium machine guns get an additional shot, so I roll 7 dice. The vehicle has moved and the target is at long range, so I need 5 plus to hit. And I scored 2 hits, which kind of surprised me. The target are regulars, so I'm killing on 4 plus. And that's 2 dead. I choose to take away 2 riflemen. And of course they get a lovely pin marker. Next I deploy the infantry squad that the half track is carrying. Again, this is probably the wrong way to do this, but it's what I did. I advanced this squad into the church ruin because I figured that would give them good cover. I had decided before playing that the walls on this terrain piece would be solid, so this infantry squad can't see the PR team just outside that door. Only the huge gap between the two sections of wall is see-through and passable. Another German order die is drawn and so I decide to advance this six-man rifle squad around the corner of the grocery store they've been hiding behind. And I want to use these guys to shoot at that perilous British infantry section. Pew pew pew. I go to measure the distance but sadly discover that the enemy are out of range. So the German rifle squad just sits there twiddling their thumbs. I then draw an order die, Germany again. I try to activate the Warlord half-track. It will need to pass an order test to see if the unit actually follows its orders. To do this I roll two dice. This unit has a morale of 9 and it has one pin, so I need to roll an 8 or lower on these two d6s. I roll an 11, which of course does not pass. And so the half-track doesn't follow its order and goes down. And just to be consistent, I dismount that vehicle's passengers, again probably totally wrong. With hindsight, I think I should have waited until I pulled a German order die for these moves. I advance the lieutenant and his friends here, and run the SMG-toting NCO-led infantry squad over this way. They want to go and shoot at those British infantry sections, rather than sit in a half-track that is doing nothing. At that point I'd used all the German order dice, so I make all the final moves for my Brits. I take the universal carrier that's loaded with the five-man rifle squad and run it as close as I can to that German infantry squad that's just hanging out over by the grocery store. The carrier can't fire or dismount its passengers after a run move, but that's okay. The Germans can't do anything either until the next turn. Then, because I don't want to move my lieutenant up, unless I know he will have more infantry to protect him, I do an order test for the pinned infantry and I roll a four, which means they pass and I take away their pin. This pleases the infantry. They're so pleased, they advance forward 6 inches in order to get in range to shoot at the Germans next to the grocery store. I measure the range, and realise that the universal carrier is blocking the line of sight for my Bren gunner, which is a bit of a shame. The NCO with his SMG is definitely out of range, so that leaves 4 riflemen that are able to fire. Because of the special rule I've chosen for my Brits, Rapid Fire, I can roll one bonus die for every three riflemen firing. This means I take five shots. These being long range and after having moved means I need fives to hit, of which I get one. Bad shooting boys, I expected better of you. 
I need a 4 plus to kill and that's one dead German, or Russian pretending to be a German. I give them a pin and take away the corpse. Then Mortimer and his pals move up to stay relatively close to the rest of the infantry, but not too far out of the cover of the hedge, and thus endeth turn 2. The first order die of turn 3 is British, and I decide to try and use my artillery observer, so I give him a fire order. I don't know if I'm quite doing this right. Also, I forgot to place a marker where the artillery is aiming, but it's right at that squad of Germans in the ruined church. I then roll on the artillery barrage chart and get a 3, which means the artillery fire is delayed. Which is sad, at least for the British. Time for some German fun times. Instead of moving the infantry away from where I know the artillery wants to come in, I try to move the pinned Hanamag. So again I roll an order test for it needing 8 or less. I roll a 10, and so this vehicle goes down and stays right where it is. Moving on, a British order die is pulled and so I decide to give this universal carrier a fire order to try and mow down this little squad of Germans. And in reaction the Germans decide to go down, which seems like a good idea. The carrier has passengers aboard and is therefore able to fire both of its guns for 4 shots each. And because the Germans went down, those 8 shots are hitting on 5 plus. I get 4 hits which seems reasonable to me. Killing on 4 plus, and that's 2 more dead Germans. I remove the corpses from the back and then change the pin marker to reflect the fact that this unit now has two pins. They haven't lost half of their number from the firing of one enemy unit so they don't need to take a morale test. Yet. Another British die is then drawn from the little black bag. I use it to move this infantry squad forwards, obviously so they can continue picking on that shrinking squad of Germans. I measure and they're obviously in range, but now the light machine gun has line of sight and is in short range, so it won't take a penalty when firing. The rifles are still at long range and the SMG is still too far away. So I roll for the rifles and LMG separately. Because the enemy is down, at long range and the firing unit has moved, I would need 7s to hit, impossible on a D6, but you can still take 9 impossible shots. You need to roll a 6 and then another 6 to get a hit. It's worth trying at least if there is nothing else to shoot at. Sadly this time my rifles scored no hits. Then the Bren gun fires its 4 shots and gets 2 hits. I roll for damage killing on 4 plus. I get 1 kill though I was obviously hoping for 2. That's only one third of the German squad dead, so they still don't have to pass the morale test to see if they run away or not. But they do get a third pin, which is almost as good. Yet another British order die is pulled from the bag and I decide to do silly things with my now empty Bren carrier. And I move it forward, pivoting to face the German lieutenant and the infantry squad in the church ruin. I fire at the lieutenant and his buddies. It's well and truly inside the gun's range and so I only suffer the penalty for moving, so I need 4 plus to hit. And I only get 1. I kindly let the carrier know that I am not impressed with its shooting. On the plus side, at least it caused a pin. I then draw another British die. This is getting a bit ridiculous. I use it to run this infantry squad forward into the intersection in town. Almost certainly not the smartest move considering that half track is right there. I obviously apply the same recklessness I use in video games to tabletop gaming. And we can't spend all of our time hiding, can we? I then draw a German die and like just about anyone else would, I exploit the silly move the British just made. Though probably not in the most brilliant way. I move this half track up a little bit and open fire on those British with its medium machine gun. They're definitely within range. I get 7 shots with Hitler's buzzsaw and the only penalty to my roll is for moving so I need 4s to hit. And I get 4 hits. I need 4s to kill and that's 4 dead Brits. Insert some kind of witty comment about 4 lots of 4 here. I give them their pin marker and take away 4 riflemen keeping them within an inch of each other. One thing I forgot to do here is roll for exceptional damage. When you roll a 6 for damage, you may roll it again and if a second 6 is scored, the shooter chooses which enemies to remove as casualties. Probably not such a big deal in a game played against myself, but it is something that should be kept in mind. Britain is drawn from the bag next and what I'd like to do is have my Cromwell shoot at the half track to avenge those 4 dead infantrymen. This time the Cromwell gets no penalty to hit, so it's going to hit on a 3. And as you can see I've rolled a 5, just inside the frame. To cause damage I need a 7 plus. With the medium anti-tank gun's penetration value of 5 plus, this should be easy. I roll a 3 which makes 8 and then I roll on the vehicle damage chart scoring a 5, which means the half track gets knocked out. Boom. If I was less lazy I'd edit some explosions in. 
The next turn goes to the British. Because I'm a bad, the action is barely in shot, but I moved Mortimer and his buddies a little closer to that squad with the pin because it might be helpful later. Then the Brits go again. This is probably not the most sensible course of action, but I want to move my PR team just enough that they can shoot at the half track, which is just within their 12 inch range. Because the PR launcher is a shaped charge weapon, it suffers no penalty for firing at long range, so the only penalty we incur is from moving. I need 4s and I roll a 5, which obviously hits. I need a 7 plus with the weapon's penetration bonus of 5 and I've rolled a 10 so the half track is damaged. I then roll a 2 on the vehicle damage chart. This means the half track is immobilised. It takes one more pin and can't be moved for the rest of the game. This is one of the immobilised tokens from the Band of Brothers starter set. The only dice left in the bag now are German, so I'll make some moves with those. First, I want to activate the Lieutenant. Because he's pinned, I need to pass an order test. I forgot to take it into consideration at the time I played, and I'm not sure if the Lieutenant's morale bonus applies to himself. At any rate, I rolled an 8, thus he passes the test and follows orders. I move them a little closer to the PR team, to get them into short range, because these guys are all equipped with assault rifles. In hindsight, I realise all this does is remove the penalty for being at long range and exchanging it for the penalty for moving. I could have just given a fire order, it would have been just the same. Assault rifles get two shots each, so I roll six dice needing four or better to hit. The die that went off screen was a two, unfortunately. So I've scored three hits. Against two men, that's pretty good. Let's see if we can convert that to three kills. Nope, only one. Nobody is going to have to double die today. I remove the Piat figure as a casualty and the loader falls over in shock that I didn't remove him. Because half the team is killed, I need to make a morale check needing 9 or less. I roll 11 and thus fail the test. The Piat team runs away and the Germans gain 1 victory point. Because I'm a numpty, I didn't video it, but I advanced both of these infantry squads in order to take shots at the British in the intersection. The unit on the left scored no hits. The three men that can fire from the church ruin also needing four up to hit score no hits. Thrilling combat. Continuing with the Herbert is a numpty theme, I realised I finished the turn with this universal carrier closer to enemy units than any friendly ones, so it counts as destroyed and Germany gets a free victory point. On to turn 4, in which the British get the first order die. Again, I wasn't recording when I thought I was, but I move the Cromwell around the corner and pivot it to face the infantry in the church ruin. They're very obviously in range and I open fire with both the hull and coaxial machine guns. These get 5 shots each, so I roll 10 dice needing 4 plus to hit. I scored 5 hits, which while not as many as I would like is still fairly good. I roll again, killing on 4 plus, and it turns out every hit was lethal. This tank really is a killing machine and the hero of my British army. I remove the casualties and I don't bother adding a pin marker yet because so many of this squad died that I will need to do a morale check. They're too far away from the lieutenant and his morale giving bonus powers, so they need a 9 or less and I've rolled a 10. Some might want that slightly cocked die re-rolled, but I'm fine with it. Failing the morale test, the squad runs away crying about the big mean tank and the British gain a victory point. Another British order die is drawn and so I advance this infantry squad forwards, obviously with the intention of finally removing that now very little squad of Germans. They're all in short range except for the NCO's SMG, which is still at long range, but at least he gets to shoot this time. I roll for the SMG first. I need 5 to hit because it's moved and is at long range. They both miss so we don't worry about the SMG. I have four riflemen, so with the British special rule rapid fire I get five shots from rifles plus the light machine gun has four shots. They're all in short range, so the only penalty is for movement and I need four plus to hit. Out of all that fire I only get three hits, but it's definitely enough, killing on four plus and two die. I take away the corpses and that's another point to the British. The next order die drawn is German. I decided to run the lieutenant over to the other infantry squad with the thought that he might be able to support that larger team. Then a British order die is drawn and I make a similar move with my British and advance Mortimer and co up behind the tank to be closer to the other infantry. British go again. This time I try to see if my artillery can come in. At the time of play I forgot that you roll for this at the start of each turn instead of giving a fire order. At any rate I rolled a 3 and it's delayed again. I told you I would get things wrong. Moving on, the next turn goes to Germany. 
It's not looking all that great for the Germans, and so I figured now is a good time for a stupid and probably suicidal move with about the only firepower I have left. And I move this infantry squad out so all members can fire at the British. I fire the SMG first. It's moved and is at long range, so we need a 5 to hit. That's one hit. Then a 4 is needed to kill. Nope, no kill. Then I have 7 rifles who only suffer the movement penalty, so they're going to hit on 4+. Plus. They manage to score 4 hits, which could be devastating for those British. Rolling to kill, we need 4+, plus and 3 Brits die. I remove the corpses and change the pin marker to reflect the hits they've just taken. This unit has lost more than 50% of its numbers, so it will need to take a morale test. They're just out of range of the lieutenant and his morale bonus, so despite my attempts to get him close enough, they won't get his bonus and will need a 9 or less to pass. And I roll a 10, so that unit is destroyed and removed from the table. Not bad for a final desperate move. Farewell Brits, farewell. A British order die is drawn next. So in a move that is probably against the rules, I decide to advance the Bren carrier towards the German infantry squad while leaving behind its passengers. Again, I'm not sure if I need to draw the order dice for the infantry to make that move out of the carrier or not. At the time, I figured it was part of the carrier's move. The carrier then opens fire on the German infantry. Four shots with a plus one penalty for moving, needing fours to hit. I get three hits and then convert those three hits into two kills, which isn't enough to cause a morale check, but it does cause a pin and hey, killing two out of eight isn't too bad. I draw another British die next and because there's only one unit left I can activate, I move my five man rifle section forward and open fire on the Germans. I get six shots with these five men because of the rapid fire special rule and I need fours to hit. Turns out these guys are exceptional marksmen and only one misses. Not bad at all. I roll for damage and manage to kill four men. Again, I forgot about the exceptional damage rule, but when killing four out of six men, I guess it's not so important. At least not this time. I take away the corpses and bury them out back. The two survivors will now need to take a morale test. Fortunately for them, they are within six inches of their lieutenant and so receive his two plus morale bonus. I roll a 10 and they survive, though they do take another pin. There is only one die left in the bag and it's a German one. At this point I was running low on time and it was clear that the Germans would probably not survive another turn of combat, so I decided to call it there. The Germans have three victory points and the British have four. According to the victory conditions laid out in the scenario description, that's a draw. Though I think it's clear that if I played another turn, the British would have won. This reinforces my belief that painted models fight better than unpainted ones. Anyway, I had a lot of fun playing this game, even though I know I did a few things wrong. And there are probably quite a few other mistakes that I didn't catch during the editing of this video. If there's anything I've done incorrectly without even knowing, tell me in the comments section below and next time I'll probably make fewer mistakes. Maybe. Okay, probably not. What I am sure will improve next time is the video itself. This one didn't work out quite how I wanted it to, but it wasn't so bad that I felt it needed to be scrapped. My original plan was to have my webcam set up as an overhead camera, but the computer it was connected to sucks. It wouldn't capture motion properly and then only at 720p, so it wasn't worth trying to use this time. Fortunately the video I got with my phone was mostly good, and I only forgot to hit record a couple of times. I probably won't be buying additional cameras to make these videos anytime soon, but I will be trying to make improvements. I did consider making a kind of overhead animated minimap type graphic, but I figured it would take too much time to do for this video without the overhead camera to use as a reference. I would like to know what kind of improvements you guys would like to see. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you have any questions, bearing in mind that I'm a numpty, leave those in the comment section too future solo games will probably include more terrain, or at least slightly more painted terrain, and possibly more painted models. But if I have to field armies composed of entirely painted models, we'll be waiting a long long time until I play the next game, so don't bother suggesting that. I don't know when I'll be doing another solo game, this did take quite a bit of time to do, but I will be playing again in the future at some point. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more like it more often, a good way to get that to happen is to help support the channel over on Patreon. 
maybe I will make having these games become a regular thing a goal over on Patreon. There's a link in the description and on screen now. Also, don't forget to do the other YouTubey things like subscribing, clicking the like button, sharing and leaving comments. You know, if you want to. Hopefully you've found this video entertaining. As always, I shall return soon. So until then, happy wargaming and thanks for watching. Farewell.